This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Coupon Simulator, everybody, also mm. known as Miles Edgerface Attorney Investigations. Ambassador Polano's just been handing those coupons out like... Like, no tomorrow. Like, well, coupons. Coupons. He really wants us to go to Walt Disney World, but He's like, you know how whenever you, like, visit um, a new city or whatever, and they're like, come to our concert, like, come to th this place, and like... Come to church camp, learn to kiss. It, sure. And like, or like Shen Yun. Shen Yun? Remember that, like, Chinese dance show? They, like, tours no. all around? Anyway, they, like, tour all around, I think, like, America. And they're always like, come to Shan Yun. I thought you were saying Shan Yu at first. No, not Shan Yu. Come to Shan Yu. He's no. the leader of the no. Huns. No, no, that's not what I was saying at all. How is the investigation proceeding on your end? Lindsay says, that's top secret. If you're going to attempt to imitate your superior, at least do it well. And uh, I should really get some sleep. I don't suppose he believes in the accidental leakage of information. There's an overturned spotlight here. When the Yadagarasu appeared, the audience that was waiting for the speech to start panicked. I suppose that's when someone must have knocked it over. I'm having a tough time visualizing the mass confusion that took place here. I thought to use my whip to capture the Yadagarasu. However, there were people in my way and I was unable to land even a single lash. I suppose this means that some other poor saps were hidden instead. People. Oh my god. Hmm? This statue bears a resemblance to the Primadu statue. The plaque says King Primadu and the battlefield. In order to save the queen, King Primadu put his life on the line and went to war. So Primadu was actually a person of royal blood. I thought he was simply someone imitating a character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprises me is that the real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. I suppose there's that too. Steel Samurai was actually based off of King Primadu. Maybe. I mean, that's how a lot of, like, kids shows- primadu we do. That's, <laughs> that's how a lot of shows get started, though, is it starts from, like, myths mm -hmm. and legends and stuff. Right. Hence Percy Jackson. I suppose Ambassador Alba sat in this chair. Ambassador Alba is very elderly. They couldn't give him a better chair. There's no back. It's just like a stool. That's like if you had, like, the royal queen of England over and you're like, sit on the bar stool while we eat. Like, that's literally what it looks like. Maybe they like. don't have the fancy chintz arm chairs to pull out here. Maybe not. Maybe they don't have the chair from the Grand Thrones with all the knives Or the thinking it. chair. Or the thinking chair from Blue's Clues. Oh. Shout out to Blue's Clues, one of the best kids shows. They have a new guy on there now with like yeah, a couple Josh. shirts. Yeah, Josh. Josh? Is it Josh? Yeah, the Filipino guy. Nice. That's cool. He was apparently Steve's cousin. And I love oh, the wow. So the first episode apparently it's like he's like he calls Steve and Joe. Joe's working at the present store. <laughs> and uh Steve is working as a private detective because he can find clues on his own. Right, now. and then he's got the hat to cover his hair loss. Um, yeah. yeah, no, that's super cool. That's good for him. Like imagine growing up and like in your acting career, like, I wonder what I'm gonna be known for if I like do acting, then it's like, congrats, you're the newest blues what, clues guy. One of my favorite uh phases like for the clip that's on youtube for that like one of the top comments is like me watching the show with my kid it's like steve's like oh can i like talk to my friend out there it's like the kid's like my kid's like i don't know that guy he's not my friend's like the dad crying like, shut up it's not all about you he was talking about me <laughs> <laughs> apparently a lot of like the pe parents people were now parents and their kids are watching blue yeah. like, Steve, remember me? <laughs> we teared up a little bit. Ah, I think it's great. The chair was prepared for him should he have gotten tired during his speech. In that case, why didn't he plan to make his speech sitting down in the first place? The ambassador is also quite prideful, that's why. Also, who makes a speech sitting down? Nobody. Like, no, you're, no. <laughs> you're a strong leader, that, but he's like got like the hover chair. He's cool. If you're a strong leader, like you stand. That's true. He sounds like my old principal from grade school who'd speak at assemblies. I want to hear that more was about that. Ambassador Alba. So this is where Ambassador Alba was to give his speech. The stage was set up nicely. However, where was the audience supposed to sit? Hmm, perhaps they were supposed to sit around the edge of the pool? That's such a poor planning. If there was no place other than a spot or two by the pool, they really should have made seating arrangements, like how the gallery is set up in the court. Indeed. You can sense that consideration for the viewers was taken with those. So in the end, the speaker and his audience were standing the whole time, huh? Yes, although I suspect the audience would have liked to sit down after a while. Ooh, that oh, that would have been bad. Especially if he's, like, delivering a half-hour speech. 
Oof. You can lean on the statue. Only a few like, people can. You could sit on the side of the pool. They, they just jumped in the water, and a lot of it spilled out, and that's why it's empty now. You no, know, the end of his speech, he jumps into the water like Cowabunga! He's an old man! That doesn't stop him. Actually, he's, only, he's like 72. Yeah, that doesn't stop old men. Our, our, our grandpa? grandpa's still going skiing, and he's like 80 something. Well, oh, so. not this year, but previous oh. years, he's like, he like went skiing so much that the past was free. He's like, I don't know what to think about. He this. was like 82, they like let him in for free at like the skiing place. Yeah. He's like, I don't know how to feel about this, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> there are roses scattered on the surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. It's not just for aesthetics. The pool's water is also used in putting out fires. Oh, that's why it's drained. They use the water here to help put out the fires. Oh. I see. Oh. The pool stopped filling itself automatically. The fountain spouts are set to stay open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. If this water is used to put out fires, I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. Which suggests that this pool was recently used somehow in this embassy. I guess I'll take some notes about it just in case. Fountain spouts data added in the organizer. You know that'll be important. Ah! That freaked me the out. No! <laughs> How dare you surprise me like that! Oh, I'm sorry! Oh, hey, Edgy! Thanks for what you did back there! Your gratitude alone is enough. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. I know that! Do you really think that I have the time to just jump into a pool and swim around for fun? Alright then, did you by chance fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice. So you know my son, right, Edgy? What? Your son? How did this guy get married? I guess I kind of lost sight of him when I shook hands with the ambassador. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he was around here whenever I saw him! You imbecile! How can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell in the pool? And how old is this child of yours anyway? Huh? Oh, um, how old is he again? Did he pull a phoenix right and adopt another child too? <laughs> Larry, this is the first I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, that chick, the pink princess. Mindy? The pink princess? Miss Von Karma, I was a bit confused by this man's words for a bit there. However, I believe what he is looking for is the doll of the Iron Infant. Oh. Yup, because I'm the Steel Samurai through and through, heart and soul. And the Iron Infant is my cute little son. Y you have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Thanks for saying it like that, Larry. I have a son. Oh, he's just a doll, like, because I am the Steel Samurai. I was about to say, otherwise he's pulled, like, a Phoenix round Wright. two of Phoenix Wright of, like, oh, I've well, got a kid. He did it first, though, because this takes place before Apollo. Round two being that this game came out after, though. Oh, yeah. Saying. Larry, we have not seen hide nor hair of the Iron Infant, but rest assured that if we should find him, we'll let you know. Now get out of there. Sounds good. In that case, I'll go search over there. Hey, wait. <sighs> well, it's not as if he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. So he's just in the pool. Yeah, apparently. Hmm, a statue of a woman. I wonder if the lady is pouring water. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of the, ki of the love to King Primadu. Hmm. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it seems that you were lousy at reading a woman's heart. I opened my mouth about a statue, and she somehow made the leap to that. The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagarasu? I believe I figured out who its true origin. Oh, it's from the leaf. I'm an idiot. I expected no less from my subordinate. Now let's hear what you know on the subject. What really cast the shadow of the Yadagarasu? So you think it was the... Yeah, it's the leaf in combination with that. It's Morty Williams. Take that. The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagarasu. Is it not possible that it was created by this statue? Objection! Are you playing me for a fool, Miles Edgeworth? The statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the, st to the, to the shadow of the Yadagarasu. You are correct. However, the statue is but one part of the whole picture. What do you mean by only one part? What is the other part to the real form of the Autograph's new shadow? The... The... The, uh... 
lamp that fell. Not the lamp, the spotlight that fell. The spotlight was This there. one or yeah, the one, one on the other side? No, not the one on the other side. Well, that's the one that fell. Well, the other, the other thing is on the ground. See that? That makes sense. Take that. Franziska, if you could take a look at this, don't you find it to be a bit suspicious? Not at all. Hmph, <laughs> as I thought. For you see, I was merely testing you just now. We have no time to waste on your pompous talk, so let's get on with your explanation already! I'm with Franziska here. No! Ugh, I guess Franziska just couldn't understand my point. I need to think this through again. Now the Yadagarasu shadow... There really is only one thing that can explain how it was cast, and it must be this. And was it the other one, then? Because it flew? Take that! Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -mm. Take that! No, I wanted to switch. Um... The... other... leaf? The other leaf? Maybe? Take that! No? What else could it possibly be? A sword? That doesn't make any sense. It's... another statue? The Yadagrasu's shadow was made from the shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panicked state. However, if we were to restore the lights to where they were when the thief appeared... You believe that the two shadows will create the Yadagrasu's shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yadagarasu. Do we have Kay's, like, nifty thing to reset the crime scene? Little thief? Yeah. She has it with her, and she's not here. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast the shadow of King Primadu in the battlefield, the shadow of the King statue would appear on the backdrop of this stage. Likewise, if we set up a light up on the queen who spoke of the love to Prin King Primadu, her silhouette would also appear on the backdrop of the stage. Aha! So if we were to combine the two statues and shadows... It looks nothing like the Yadagarasu's shadow! Miles Edgeworth, how do you explain this grotesque shape? Calm down, Franziska! The way the light needs to be shown on the Queen statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of the Queen statue needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the Queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part? Yes, and that one part alone is enough to fill in the rest of the Yadagarasu's shadow. Why didn't you say that in the first place? You're right. Uh, I apologize. Now, what part of the Queen's statue was used to complete the Yadagarasu's shadow? The leaf. This? Yeah. What else? This is that part. And how exactly should we shine the light on this part to complete the shadow? Because I can't see how this would fit in at all. Ugh. All right, perhaps I was oh, wrong. Oh, is it just on her hand? Yeah. Oh. Francisca, it's not that we should be shining light on it, it, but it's a different location. Miles Edgeworth, why are you withholding the correct information from me? No! Please forgive my transgression. Very well. Just don't mess it up again. Yeah, it's just on her hand. Okay. I didn't think that- I thought the spotlight would be too big. Think back to what is missing in our shadow. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Ah! They're very lucky they had the shadows that just happened to be able to make the shadow grass shadow. Yeah, no kidding. That's right. It can only be the shadow of the queen's left hand. Franziska, can we please adjust the spotlight's position? So that it only shines on the queen's left hand? Alright. Let's give it a try and see what we get. It's- Hmm. Yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. The culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning beforehand. And then pulled the plug after people saw that the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved the spotlights around. Which we can assume was also a part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Yadagarasu shadow had vanished. Which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning. So you see, the Yadagarasu never did visit Alabas tonight. The only country that Fee visited was Baval, although it can be assumed, that the Yadagarasu had an accomplice in Alabas. An accomplice? But who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the Shadow Show. 
I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is the existence of this accomplice. Investigation complete! We got it. I think this is Alba? How's the investigation? <laughs> How's the investigation going? Nope, oh, not Alba. <laughs> Detective Bad, you got so old, whoa. <laughs> Detective Bad, how have you come to join us in investigating the Autograssu? Or have you done that? I left the murder in Agent Lane's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Autograssu. So yes. So, what have you found out? I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure, but you have my regret it. We're here because we're ready to face whatever may come. So, if you please. When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed, I'm telling you, it's a genuine international journalist! <laughs> she gave me an interesting picture. Are you kidding me? Solana's not in the case, but she basically is. Yep. <laughs> I hate you, Lana Hart. Uh, I love how in every game that Lana reappears in, you get progressively less and less excited. I get less and less excited because they're overusing her. And then it's like, well, we know it's not Lana. <laughs> She's actually only been in three games, if you include this one. Yeah, but she was in one of them twice. Right. <laughs> a journalist. Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. This is the photo I got from her. Let's see this. It could be a bird! W what in the world? Wait, 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 wait. Let me look at this. So it could be a bird. It could be, like... Batman. Batman. It could be someone tossing a wig across the stage. It's Frank saw it! <laughs> also, there's, like, something black on the side as well, so it could just be... <laughs> it's obvious the culprit is Red Harry! What's the Iron Child look like? Iron Infant. Iron Infant? He's basically like Steel Samurai's face on a baby doll's body. Ugh. Okay, so it's not that. Um, it could be like... Um, someone... Valent Grammary doing a magic trick. No, he's not in this. The Adagarasu. He's flying through the air! The times, they are changing. It's not just man. But evidence, even they lie to us now. W when was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. It was taken from a nearby building. Could be totally Sheena. That you can see the embassy from. Sheena doesn't wear a cape like that, though. I see. So this was taken after the fire. She can put it on. Photo of Yadagarasu data, John Dead. The blur in this picture took off from the Babali's embassy. Here's the thing, though. If the fires just got put out, they had already arrested Kay at that point, so that's not Kay. Right. Actually, it can't be Sheena, either. Because she was there, yeah. Could be Larry being an idiot. He was like, yo, dude, you won't believe this. But so I, I, I saw in Splatoon how, like, you can, like, ride the zip lines across. I wanted to try that. <laughs> I mean, literally, though. It flew over the boundary and headed into the embassy of Alabas. Objection! This is simply not possible. People are incapable of flight. Is that a fact? This could be another instance. I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flying person once. I was about once. to say, this could be another case of- Elise Donum. <laughs> not Elise Donum. Yeah, that was Elise Donum that he was involved with that case. Oh, I, I'm not talking about that one. I was talking about flying circus man. Oh, Max, he can fly with the bus. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, I've come across a case like that as well. Two, actually. Circus case and at least don't <laughs> Maybe it happens more often than we think. Am I up to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph? No. Well, the Autograssu took off from the Babali's embassy, so I should start from there. Franziska, I need to return to the Babal investigation for a bit. Alright. So the Autograssu is just a shadow. The calling card that was sent is what threw everyone off and made them assume things. It's possible that all of the events tonight were part of the overall plan. I'm going to continue investigating on the Alabastian side. You two, as I always say, don't do anything stupid, alright? I wonder if he's alright. It's unusual for him to be so nice. I think it's simply that he is concerned for our well-being, Francisca. <laughs> Can't move around Ha! <laughs> what a farce! Turns out that what I thought was the Yadagrasu's shadow was some statues instead. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everyone was in a panic. And here I thought you'd come over to throw some sarcastic remark in my face. Of course not. 
You and I were both of one mind and in pursuit of the truth. <laughs> but are we really of one mind, though? I'll be returning to the Babal investigation now. I'll contact you if I find anything. What's beyond that door? Um, the, Is it like the Alabastian the Embassy. Oh. <laughs> yes, you know the stained glass window areas that Sora went into. It, that's beyond. No, no, that. I'm talking about like when you when he enters the cave and he's oh, like, "Me and Titus going to explore the secret cave." You understand nothing. <laughs> we'll never know what's beyond the door. And then they never come back to that idea ever again. Kingdom Hearts doesn't make any sense. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> you sure are stubborn as a rock. Well, like Kingdom sucks. I like Kingdom Hearts. I, love I just Kingdom can't Hearts. understand the plot. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. All right, I'm counting on you. Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth! Now come on, let's get back to the investigation! Were you just waiting here the whole time for us? Yes, let's. She walks remarkably slow. Uh, I guess we can walk in. March 14th, 10.37pm, Baboe's Embassy, Secretariat's office. He's like, I burned everything to the ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what it looks He's like. like yeah. He looks like that's what's happening. It looks oh. worse than the last time we came in. That's the same pose Sweet Tooth is in when he wins. In yes, PlayStation yes All -Stars. it is! <laughs> I haven't played PlayStation All-Stars in forever. Because it's way worse than Smash Bros. But Zeus. But Zeus. To think, after all that running around, we're right back to where we started. It would appear that way. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. You mean in the shadows? Have you found Manny's killer yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Paleno, but I have yet to find his killer. Then I guess his murder really was the work of the Yadagarasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yadagarasu. The real Yadagarasu's a noble vigilante, or vigilante who's only out to steal the truth. Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, all right? Mr. Plano. He, he does seem very nice, at least. Eh, he seems nicer than Gant, but I mean... Oh, well, Gant was... He also doesn't have the creepy stare that Gant has. No, that's because he keeps his eyes shut. <laughs> no, does and, he and it's also because Gant has, like, a bunch of dimples and wrinkles that are just like... Mm. I can actually do the Gant face. Yeah, you well. really can. Actually, there is one thing you can do. Will you allow us to take another look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh, sure. Please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few questions I'd like to ask about you personally about, Ambassador. If it will bring a smile back to Miss Farnay's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Polano. You're a total gentleman. Ha <laughs> ha You don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. She's like, I did everything. <laughs> hey, Sir Polano! Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person that you spotted. Yeah, when I came into this room, that person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet that the person I was chasing is Mr. Cochin's killer. We don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key to the Yadagrasu stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu is also somehow involved. I knew it! That woman is almost definitely Mr. Cochin's killer! That was Momisto Mew, excuse me. Yet again, we don't know that. There are too many mysteries to be solved in this case. Still, if we find Callisto Yu, we can arrest her for double murder of Mackerel and, uh, Burn Faraday. And she tried to kill us seven years ago. That's true. Speaking of the Autograssu and mysteries, I received a most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in the investigation too! Yes. He has been chasing after the Algarasu for all these years. Uncle Bad. Now then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. W what? That kind of looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing. Does this mean I was chasing the fake Algarasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. But this looks how th this could be how the person escaped. Well, we'll need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. They turned into a cat, and then they jumped out, and then they were like, Meow! It got up and danced away. Wait, it what? <laughs> it got up and it danced away. In any case, let's not dawdle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. Begin the Bobbley's Embassy investigation. So this is the real Primadu statue. This is really valuable, right? 
That's what they say. So wait, the real gold statue got burned, or like, dirty. Someone poured dirt over it. Okay, you're not seriously considering the theft of this statue, are you? No way, Mr. Edgeworth. I wasn't thinking about anything like that. I was just calculating, in my head, how much the statue is worth. Hmm, that sounds mighty suspicious to me. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight. Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. Uh, earlier, Larry Butt set the building on fire. We put that <laughs> out, but then someone else set the building on fire. Yeah. <laughs> we had two fires here at the Bobbley's Embassy tonight. What a bother all of that was. Wait, but only one fire we know about is the one after the Jim and Ninja show. Ah, oh, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jam and Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of our embassy were caught on fire. Man, they really need to make better buildings. <laughs> Not wanting to cause a panic among the theater goers, we decided to keep it internal. And the fire after the Jam and Ninja show was the second one of the night? Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? When was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. I suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out, so that actually took place before she found the suspicious person. So it could have been Molesto Mew. Mm -hmm. So then, what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the third floor. I think it was leftover embers from the fire on the floors above it that caused it. Yeah. That's... how should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck. My office is on the fifth floor. Manny's office is here. And Manny himself. All gone in the blink of an eye. Fires in Babal data jotted down. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Polina. Oops, look at me going on and on. And now then, what was it you wanted to ask about? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Cochin's actions and whereabouts were as well? Yes, very well. Let's see, I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. At first I woke up and then I brushed my teeth. Brushed teeth? Ah! <laughs> After that I had a roll for rest. Uh, fascinating. Uh, how about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you'd like a condensed version? Alright, I can do that for He'll you. He'll leave something super important out. <laughs> so, what did Mr. Cochin and you do this morning? Well, originally, we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the Jam and Ninja. But Manny and I wanted to turn it into a photo op, so we were here tidying up in this office. You cl helped clean Mr. Cochin's office. Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Okay. On the fifth floor? I'm getting, I'm getting Mickey Mouse posters all over the wall. Wait, <laughs> that would not require re renovations. You just put them up. <laughs> um. These are huge posters. <laughs> it's closed for renovations. Why? Oh, we're putting posters up. Um. Wait, so that means he. His, I mean, uh, they're painting the walls. His office. Oh. Okay. I don't know. His office was under renovation, and then the building caught on fire. You know Disney's Grand Floridian Resort? I wanted to look like that. So it's actually, so what great. ended up happening was like Mr. Incredible broke through the window with Pro Zone, <laughs> and like in that one. Part, First Aladdin joined in. Now Mr. Incredible is part yeah, of this. Yeah, but case. they didn't knock down the building. They just kept it up. And it's like <laughs> you knocked down the building. He just swapped the statues. This is why both the Primitive statue and the Babali's knife set are down here. I see. Oh, but the tidying didn't take much, really. We just burned some files we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. I bet cleaning up the fireplace must have been a real pain, though. Huh. Ah, uh, about that. I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. You're an idiot. <laughs> I guess I'm up a bit- I'm up, up a creek without Manny here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a secretary's anger? Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Why, even just this morning he got mad at me. I spilled some Bobbley's ink onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. So that's why it got caught on fire. <laughs> and he got mad at me, saying that I should treat the ink with more respect. Apparently, orders go up the chain of command around here. And mm -hmm. Amb Polino's testimony. Amb. Job. Hey, Amb. That's about for it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do, being an ambassador and all. 
Hey, we don't know what. Maybe it's, it's just like. Mickey maybe it was his chill day because there was going to be people coming. Roy Disney called me asking about Walt Disney Baba. <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be. A is thing. he is he still alive, Roy well, Disney? I think so. I hope so. I don't know. Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down to the, together to the theatrical neutrality. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai State Show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So they were together until the start of the Steel Samurai Show. A little while later, after I'd straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Wait, so the show was taking place in the afternoon? Mm. That's very important to know. Awesome. Man, this guys he is being really helpful. He's just telling us everything. Here's the thing. If that was taking place in the afternoon, as he said, because this is part of the, the segment Afternoon Activities when we asked mm -hmm. him, that means we should be able to see way more happening on that photo. Mm -hmm. If it was taken right after the show started. Okay, so also, I should ask, so you're kind of suspicious of this guy, right? A little bit. Do you think he's, like, the main killer? Or do you no. think he was an accomplice? Accomplice. Okay. I think that... If there's a killing on his grounds, he's gotta... Know about it. Gotta know about it. Okay. Gotta approve it, and... <laughs> not gotta approve not, <laughs> I, don't know. I give you permission to kill this guy. <laughs> well, there's... Now that we've seen more, he's got so much incentive to want this guy dead. He's super mad at him all the time, and even though he's higher up than Manny, Manny's, like, being a butt and being, like... <laughs> Manny is being a butt. Stop spilling ink on the wall. <laughs> it might catch fire, because I might catch it on fire. <laughs> Uh, because I was to take part of the photo op on stage at the end of the show. Hmm. There was a commemorative photo op at the end. It was a fantastic photo of the three of us. Ambassador Alba, Steel Samurai, and myself. I actually really enjoyed about, doing this guy's voice. <laughs> wait, so they were prepping the photo op, but Manny wasn't going to be in the photo? No. Important. Okay, good. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor. And it caught on fire. To prepare for my handshake photo op with the Gemini Ninja. Had to have a nice, firm handshake, you know. Right. You don't want a sloppy handshake. He seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. I admit I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Cochin again until after the start of the Steel Samurai show? Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in an eternal sleep. I see... Ambassador Peleno, I thank you very much for your help. I wonder if he started the fire on the fifth floor. He's like, We Bang. didn't start the fire. Yeah, this is literally this entire case. Maybe he was like, Oh, fuck. You know what would be great? We could cause a big old commotion. <laughs> or like, maybe maybe he smokes. I wonder if you're allowed to smoke in the embassy. And he's like, He's the mm. ambassador. He can probably do whatever he wants. Yeah, so he embassy. starts smoking and then the walls catch on fire because he spilled it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> starts running down the stairs like. But you still think Larry caused the first fire? <laughs> he, Larry's, Larry has done so many things already. If something he lost smells, the it's iron usually the blood. And he like stole Lady's he went, undershirt. He tried to go down the chimney. He tried to go down the chimney like Santa Claus. Descend upon Mindy. I mean Wendy. <laughs> and then like he could totally catch the building on fire to I'm, it off. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there is anything else, please don't hesitate to ask. All right. All right, man. Thank you. I almost wish that Larry was like... Oh, we can examine this part. Yeah. It appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, that's the wall <laughs> that he spilled the ink on. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious Look looking nook and cranny. That ink hasn't, like, exploded at all. There's a bottle of Babali's ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Polino, it looks like your precious Bobbley's ink's all right after all. What? That's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's just that there's something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Oh. We'll do that. Oh, well, okay. Mr. Cochin's ink. I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bottle of ink. Um, I just thought of it right now, but... During the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called him out to him, but uh, when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by roaring green flames. 
The flames are so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. I think Maleficent is involved in this as yeah. well. Fireplaces, people going through <laughs> the fireplace. There's a secret passage in this flames. fireplace. Maleficent's just back there with the spinning wheel. I'm waiting for that thing that flew across to be the dragon. <laughs> or like, just Maleficent's cape. Or just cape. Maleficent's cape. <laughs> the fire was green. What was the cause? Well, wit crystal oil burns green when it's lit, as you can see by this lantern. Hmm. And Baudelaire's ink is made from the same oil, which means it would also burn green. You know, I too had thought it was Manny's ink that had caught on fire. So that's why I was surprised to find that it was there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. Maybe he had more than one. A case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about a mystery. What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? Damn. Goodbye. He looks like he's trying to host a kid's show there. <laughs> Welcome. This is Poeno's place. He was, Welcome. He to was <laughs> trying out to be the new guy for Blue's Clues, but didn't make it. Sorry, so man. So now that he's the ambassador. I could see Poeno being on Blue's Clues. <laughs> I can't. I think he'd creep out kids. Oh, I think he's nice. He creeped me out. Before, so so That's, I guess... Wait, his actual pose or just the low res sprite? Of the... <laughs> Maybe. Oh. So I guess embassy phones are just like normal phones, huh? Well, what did you imagine them to look like? I thought the bottle would look like a flower and the receiver would look be a butterfly. That way it looked like the butterfly receiver was sucking nectar from the flower vase. If any country had a flower phone, it would be Alabas, don't you think? Oh, then maybe the phone I envisioned would have been from when they were in Kadopia. There's really no point in asking me about something that never existed in the first place. Hm. You know what you lack, Mr. Edgeworth? Curiosity and imagination. There's only one book left standing here. Treasures of the World. Wait, what? Let me see that! Uh-huh. I see. Ah! The most important part was blackened by the fire! Why, cruel fate? Why? Looks like the map of where the treasures are located has been burnt. <laughs> that would've been perfect. Manny Cochin. His name is written here on the nameplate. Why would you put a nameplate with your name on it in your own office? I suppose it's to inform people in case they walked into the wrong room by mistake. Do you think maybe it's also there to remind you of your own name if you forget? Well, either way, it's never a bad thing to sit a nameplate on one's desk. What about that book, though? It looks like a bunch of flyers with coupons attached to them. The ball sure gives away a lot of different coupons. Maybe I should create one of my own. I could call it the Great Thief Coupon! And what kind of discount would that net you? The five-finger kind, what else? And I'd steal an extra thing or two for the bear. Things such as? Such as the truth. What else would I steal? What I wouldn't give to have a mountain of your coupons right about now. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, same thing. Chair. That looks like a very comfortable chair. Well, it doesn't look all that broken, so why don't you try sitting in it? No, I'd better not. It's very important that we preserve the crime scene at all times. Wait, but you're always touching all sorts of stuff at the crime scenes. That's because I am a prosecutor and it's part of my job to examine things. And my job is to be a great thief. Which is exactly why you are not allowed to touch anything. I think that's it. Oh wait, open desk drawer. It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. But it doesn't look too damaged. Ooh, I think we can rifle through this drawer a little bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. This is a rather unusual shape for a notepad. I suppose this must be another souvenir from somewhere. Looks like a nose. It seems that the contents of this drawer survived the fire rather well. Now that's a sturdy desk. I guess that's the value of solid wood construction. Let's see if there's anything usual left here, or useful left in here, Mr. Edgeworth. A pencil. Free sample pencils. Oh, we have the deduce option now. Deduce. Uh, that how looks can we deduce familiar. It? Why? Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? I don't know. Oh, I forgot about the mask. Mask two's notes. note. I forgot about that note. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right. What is it? it? Looks like something straight out of Monument Valley. Oh my gosh, I love that game. Monument Valley. It's like Stardew Valley, but, yeah. but better. No, it's Mo you've played Monument Valley, have you? Mm. No, it's for the phone. It's like a puzzle game, no, and I you haven't. play as this um, chick who needs to uh, 
repay her sins for save, um, stealing geometry. I have literally it's never really heard weird. of this. It's super cool. I played through the whole I game played on quarter my channel, mile actually. Ah, uh, uh, yes, that notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You s do seem to be quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the fires? Ambassador Paleno, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm, this looks like Manny's handwriting. Great! I see. In that case... Ooh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabas. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murdered Damask II. Damask II? Then this note... Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damask II to steal the Primidu statue. What?! Manny tried to steal Alabas' Primidu statue? We would know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Y yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There's one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. I believe. Is this new music? No, this is like the fancy embassy music. Oh, we just haven't talked to anyone with music playing in the background in a while. This is like always plays when we talk to. Oh, then we've just been so loud I haven't heard it. Yeah, it's really good music. I believe that you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired Damask too. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because of the Yadagorasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? <laughs> I'm actually relieved the rest of the event has been cancelled. For you see, Babal's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Kutchin know about Babal's primitive statue? Of course he knew! That's why he was the only person I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, Let me handle it. It'll be alright. Uh. <laughs> I'll find a way- I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Kodopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Did you see it before that? Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all of that to ensure that you are the next Kodopian ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or will be. I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond the simple kindness. Oh, here you are, Mr. Edgeworth! Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I re requested? Yup, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, Kay. Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What is all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the Embassy and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, Detective. Oh, I was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. To remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bat. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day. Well, don't you worry. I'm gonna find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm gonna become a good Yadagorasu, just like my father. Right? Please don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, Kay. However, I can say it is truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. <laughs> you bet. So, what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yeah? That gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? That thing you call your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief! <laughs> You're coming to rely on it, aren't you? Uh, I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. From the information Detective Gumshoe gathered and the Ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it! Alright, here we go. 
dark skies of evening, when no other bird dares to swing, the uh, terrors to take swing, dares to take wing! <laughs> One alone remains all seeing! <laughs> she just swing screws dance. up like five times. Now witness the true power of the real modern day Robin Hood! It's not a modern day Robin Hood. They're basically red white. <laughs> It seems there are other things besides what the ambassador mentioned that have changed. It's po ceiling fan, all the stuff on that corner. It's possible that we might find the escape route the person's case saw used as well. Ooh! What is this? Is it some sort of light show I was not told about? This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info that I've inputted. Really? That is certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. Ahem, I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. Well, Wait. we'll do that next time. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time for more adventures with Little Thief. Yeah. And we can learn more about... Oops, I spilled my... Oops, I set it on fire. Better leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> Find out maybe more about it faster than I know. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.